This is a 1995 Ford F-150 Lightning. This is the first generation performance truck that Ford did back between 93 and 95. This particular truck here is stock with stock wheels, stock paint, and the stock 5.8 liter engine. It's a great muscle truck and we'll be restoring it with a new paint job, some minor body work, and also some front suspension work. We need to replace the ball joints and the shocks. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Once you take off the wheel of the truck, you'll expose the spindle and the brake calipers. We'll want to remove the brake calipers and the brake pads by removing the two fasteners from behind. Once you get that off, go ahead and tuck it away in the back so that it's out of the way. And then move on to removing the coil. The coil has a small hold down bracket up above that you'll have to unfasten. And then you'll want to remove the sway bar from up front. That sway bar also has a nut and bolt behind the spindle assembly, so you'll want to unbolt that as well. So once you get that bolt out, you can use a pry bar to leverage sway bar out of there and then you can move on to unfastening the upper ball joint once you get that bolt out you can turn the spindle a bit so that you can get access to the castle nut and the cotter pin for the tie rod. You want to unfasten those. And use a pickle fork with a dead blow hammer to get that unfastened. At this point you want to unfasten the castle nut and the cotter pin from the lower ball joint. You're going to want to leave the castle nut on by a few threads though so that the, the entire spindle assembly doesn't drop down to the ground. Again use that pickle fork with a dead blow hammer to unloosen it. And then grab onto the spindle assembly as you unscrew the castle nut. And once you have the assembly out, you're going to use a ball joint compression tool as well as snap ring pliers to remove the snap rings. This ball joint compression tool is really cool. It's got a threaded rod on it that you attach to an impact driver and it'll actually press out the existing ball joints. We use the impact driver to make this job a little bit easier, but it can be done manually. The compression tool kit comes with adapters, those black rubber adapters you see behind the ball joint. You'll have to find the right one that seats onto the surface of the ball joint. So here we are moving on to the other ball joint. As you can see the clamp sort of slides into the hole where the old ball joint is. Attach that impact driver and drill that other ball joint out. And it's out. So now we're installing the new ball joints and we're going to use the reinstall cups that come with the kit. So get the clamp into its proper position, get that threaded rod to seat the cups onto the ball joint. And you're going to want to put this ball joint flush with the surface of the assembly. For this ball joint, we're going to want to push it in until we expose the groove in which the snap ring goes.
take those snap ring pliers and install the new snap ring. And we're going to install new grease boots and fittings uh, that come with the kit. Keep in mind that the grease boot that we're installing right now needs to be facing in an accessible direction so that you can attach the grease gun later. Go ahead and remove the lower bolt for the shock. I think we had just forgotten to remove that bolt earlier actually. So we're going to want to remove the pivot bolt at the I-beam under the truck. Uh, this bolt in particular gave us a hard time because of course this truck is 25 years old so there's all kinds of grime and dirt that builds up on there. But if you remove that it'll give you leverage to move the entire I-beam arm assembly. So you'll want to remove the radius arm nut and once you have that done then you should be able to wiggle the entire arm assembly out of there. As you can see we've been using the jack to help lift the entire assembly and, and once you get that thing wiggled it should get on out of there. So we're replacing the inner radius arm bushing at this point. We like putting high temperature grease wherever these bushings come into contact with metal. Uh, this prevents any squeaking in the future. Go ahead and reinstall the radius arm assembly. Again, use that jack as much as you can. It, it really makes the job easier. And now we're installing the outer bushing, once again using that high temperature grease to prevent any squeaking. Go ahead and fasten that radius arm nut. Go ahead and apply a little bit of that high temperature grease to the pivot arm bushing. At this point we'll want to reposition the coil spring sort of have to just manhandle it in there using that dead blow hammer. And once you have it in position then you can go ahead and install the hold down bracket up above. You'll notice later on in the video we actually removed this hold down bracket again to install the shock to the left. Once you have that done, then go ahead and install the I-beam to the pivot bracket. And now you can reinstall the spindle assembly. Go ahead and screw on the castle nut to the lower ball joint. And then reinstall the upper ball joint eccentric bushing. That one just gets hammered into place. Once you tighten that castle nut, go ahead and install the cotter pin. And at this point you can install the upper ball joint nut and bolt. Once that is all tightened up then you can move on to installing the tie rod back onto the spindle assembly. had a castle nut as well as a cotter pin. And once 
once you have that installed, then you can reinstall the sway bar. In order to reinstall the sway bar to the front bracket, you'll likely have to use the jack to lift it into place. Once you've bolted down the sway bar, then it's time to install the new shock. Go ahead and install the new bushings that come with the shock and position it in place. Here you can see that we took off the hold down bracket on the coil to give us a little bit more room to work with. Once you get that lower bolt into the shock, then you'll want to compress that shock to get it into its hole up above. Once that's done, then you can reposition the coil spring, hammer that guy into place, and then reattach the hold down bracket up above. In order to screw down the shock, you'll likely have to put a wrench on either side. And then once that's done, then we're ready to reinstall the brake pads and the brake caliper. With the caliper in place, you can install the two fasteners. And there you have it folks, that's how you replace the ball joints and shocks on a Ford F-150 Lightning. Go ahead and repeat on the other side, and once that's done, go ahead and put the wheels on it. We hope you guys liked this video. If you found it informative, please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.